What is going on, everybody? A couple of things before we start the show. First off, our podcast shout out is going out to a podcast that I think is doing a really, really, really great thing with their focus on movies, on film culture, on pop culture, like, for instance, television and gaming and comic books and all that sort of thing with a focus on suicide prevention, and that is the Victims and Villains podcast. These guys are very, very likable. They have a great sound to their show, and they do focus on mental health issues, and they do focus on suicide prevention, as I said before, and that's very, very important. It's, it's almost at epidemic levels in this country. So, yes, please give them a listen. They're on iTunes. They're on Spotify. They're wherever you get your podcasts. So, yeah. Uh, support what they do and definitely give them a listen and also do download the chill lover radio app it's a app with all kinds of streaming music shows and also podcasts like collateral cinema and collateral gaming so do go on itunes and on google play and check out their app it's really really cool and also on the podcoin app you can use the the promo code collateral in order to get 300 pod beans upon registration which you can use to either give to charity or you can use it to purchase exclusive merchandise from starbucks and amazon and other companies such as that like gift cards and whatnot so yeah download the app it's on itunes and google play as well and do use our promo code collateral and do check them out and don't forget to give to charity and now with all that out of the way on with the show I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Robert Ortegon. I'm Ashley Chancellor. I'm Dakota Chancellor. This is Collateral Cinema. Welcome to Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters, where we focus on good movies, bad movies, and everything else in between in the world of cinema. We're podcasting straight from somewhere in South Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast. So whatever you have, be it dabs, be it blunts, be it whatever, smoke it if you got it. And goddamn, everybody, how y'all doing? Oh... No, go ahead, Dakota. I think I cut you off there. I just said I'm doing all right, bro. Everybody doing all right? <laughs> doing Everybody all right. doing all right. This is going to be a great episode, right? Yeah. Hopefully so. That. Hopefully so. Nice enthusiasm, Ash. <laughs> yeah, because we are doing a movie that, honestly, I don't know if it's bad. I don't know if it's awesome. I, I don't really know what this is. It's bad. It, it's bad, <laughs> but goddamn if it isn't entertaining, right? It, it's hilarious. I mean, it is, right? It's entertaining. I mean, I yeah. want to watch this again just oh, to man. see what was going on a second time. Seriously. And, of course, we're talking about the 2003 Uwe Boll-directed House of the Dead based on the Sega arcade game. Have you guys ever played this game? I think I've seen it in the arcade, but I, I'm not sure if I've ever played it, but I've seen it played. I mean, yeah. it's just always there in the corner. Right. I've played gun shooting games before where you shoot like yeah. dead things. I don't think it was specifically as the dead. It might have been, but it's always knows. there. It, well, it's never like a game where I really thought about the story of. I thought it was just a mindless shooting game. So, you know, I didn't really think about it before. Yeah. Well, in, in many ways, it is a mindless shooting game. I mean, right. to tell the truth, I mean, it, it's just a rail shooter. Like, you have a couple of guns and you just shoot zombies in a house. That's right. literally what it is. You have boss battles. Like, they pretty much telegraph the boss's weakness, like, right at the beginning of each battle. But I, I remember playing this at a goddamn Taco Bell Borderland. <laughs> I, I, I fucking went ahead and I spent fucking $5 fucking beating this game like i mean and it's, it's a fun game it really is and it actually kind of holds up when you really get down to it how about you robert did you ever play this shit what was that one carnival game with all the clowns oh that's carnival carnival right? that's a badass game. i played that 
around the same time this came out, but Diversion Games Rooms is when I played it. The yeah, first time. yeah. See, but. when Dakota and I were growing up, arcades were just kind of those things that you didn't really spend a lot of time because everybody had home consoles. Unfortunately, you're right about that. I didn't get to have that arcade experience as much. Yeah. And it was more of just like a you go like bowling and you'll see a bunch of game machines over there. You yeah. know what I mean? Things this like is, that. This is a video game adaptation, adaptation of a video game. And so you'd think Dakota and I would have a lot more to say right. about the gaming aspect, but then we just really didn't, we weren't as exposed to this sort of thing. But it, it's always been there right. in the background. You yeah. Know? And I've played Context. original, I've played original arcade games like, Whoa. you know, Galaga, Pac-Man, yeah. you know, of course. Yeah. I mean, you can't not play that on an arcade machine, but... Looks but, like, like, I haven't played any of the shooter games maybe once or twice when I was younger with a friend. See, those were always my favorite games at the arcade was the light gun right. game because it, it's real easy to get into. I mean, there's not a whole lot of technique to it. If you know right. how to aim and shoot, you can play them. Exactly. It's just But, I mean, some, some of them could still be pretty challenging. And, and this game, I remember, I remember dying quite a bit, actually. I bet. And... This movie right here, it was adapted by the, the executive producer and writer was Mark Altman. That's his name. And it's directed by one Uwe Boll. This guy is kind of legendary in his own right because he started off back in the early 2000s making a bunch of video game adaptations and not particularly good ones at that. Well, how many video game to movie adaptations have been good? I mean, I, I think that's such a small number. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, that's right, something right. we're going to yeah. go into here in a little bit. But right now, as far as Uwe Boll's career as a filmmaker, I mean, he made movies like the Blood Rain trilogy. I don't know if y'all ever played Blood Rain back in the day. I can't say that I have. I it, it was basically one of those vampire slayer video games. That's pretty much what she was. She was pretty much like a Van Helsing, just, you know, sexier and half vampire. Have you seen that TV show on Netflix, Van Helsing? Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, that's good, bro. We may have to do the Van Helsing movie sometime. The because movie that, was pretty the cool. The movie was Hugh fantastic. Jackson. It's, it's another kind of silly movie that if you just right. turn your brain off, it, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And, and House of the Dead is very much like that. I mean... Yeah. It's almost as if they took away, if they had taken away all of the plot elements that do exist and all of the exposition that's yeah. so unnecessary, I think this movie would have been so much more enjoyable if it didn't yeah. take itself serious. I, I, yeah. I, th I think that a lot of that has to do with Uwe Boll himself because he's a very hyperbolic kind of director, you know? Like every th everything that he shoots, it's always just constantly on and on and on, you know? And the pacing just goes from one scene to the other, to the other, to the other. And it's like, I mean, where are you going with this shit, dude? <laughs> I mean, his later movies, he started to kind of he started to kind of find his groove a little bit. Like it was a lot more he was a lot more angry and political in its tone. But I've heard that. I did a little bit of research and I heard that he basically has two distinct phases yeah. of his filmmaking career. And part of that is the video game adaptations with several yeah. well-known actors and then all of a sudden this kind of obscure phase, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the other video game movies that he made, he made the video game adaptation of a movie called, of a movie, of a game called Postal. And what that was is back in the 90s, like I think it was like late 90s, well, they made a video game that was pretty much just a mass shooting simulator. Oh wow! But it was very, very tongue in cheek and satirical in tone because it was, I mean, it was constantly trying to dive into the mind of this psycho, and it was kind of playing on those tropes and everything that you usually see. See, that shit wouldn't fly today. That no, wouldn't. that wouldn't happen. And, yeah. and the crazy thing is, he actually made a couple of movies that were very much about a fucking crazy psycho going on a mass killing spree and pretty much getting away with it. That's crazy. I, I don't remember what those movies are called, but it it was pretty intense. See, like, I I haven't done enough research on this because this movie wasn't really worth research to me. <laughs> honestly, it was, I mean it was it was funny, it was stupid, but I mean I didn't really want to spend my time researching it because it wasn't worth it. <laughs> but like I was saying, so. I this movie was weird, but it was entertaining to watch. It was yeah. two thousand three Puka go, Show weird. Go, going back to the movie adaptation of Postal. Right. That was very much just a straight-up satire of post-9-11 culture. 
Like really? it even had like Osama bin Laden in it and everything. And what the fuck? They, they, like Postal Two, the video game, it had fucking Gary Coleman as a cameo, and you That's can hilarious. actually go up and piss on him. You can <laughs> shoot his ass. You could. Yeah, this the second game, Postal Two, was pretty crazy. It was it was the updated graphics. Like like the first one was an isometric top down kind of shooter, kind of like the old Grand Theft Auto. Okay. And yeah, th- this movie, like it was based on more off of the second game, and he kind of ran with it a little bit. See, Bo, we need you and Robert actually, but both of y'all, we need y'all in a collateral gaming episode where we talk about like something a little bit more from y'all's generation. Vintage gaming. Vintage we'll gaming. I, I yeah. would. I would say a good place to start is. Light gun games like this, rail shooters That's like this, honestly, yeah. because yeah. I, I have a lot of great memories playing those games, both on both on consoles and at the at the arcade or the movie theater or whatnot. Like Area Fifty One is a game that I really really like. Oh god, that's oh, a yes. fun game. They even had that on pinball too, right? Ugh. Oh yeah, they had the Area Fifty One pinball game. Yeah, oh that. shit, <laughs> good times, bro. But uh, I think it would be fun to have an arcade game. Yeah. In the collateral gaming, that'd be a lot of fun. I've toyed with the idea of buying like a Nintendo Classic or a well, we need a know, board, bro. PlayStation we, Classic or right. something. Right, I've been looking at like yeah. Walmart, dude. They sell like those like one game arcade machines, like for not even that expensive. Yeah. Like we can like get hundred bucks, hundred fifty, two hundred bucks or something like yeah. that. That's what I'm saying. Like, dude, I want to get one of those, put up here in the studio, just to you know, just with, like yeah, to look at go, it. Right, going back to Uwe Boll, <laughs> he made a. He made an adaptation of an old school classic survival horror game called Alone in the Dark. And it, it starred Tara Reed, and it's known for pretty much just kind of tanking video game movies as a genre, sort of. It, it's, it's kind of seen as the worst of the worst. I mean, it, it didn't even have anything to do with the actual game, which was kind of this weird supernatural kind of survival horror thing. Like, you had to walk through a mansion you had to dodge and kill like monsters and whatnot oh yeah that was released around the time alone in the dark five was going to come out yeah and then they were going to come out side by side as kind of part of a promotional thing and then the developers dipped out and they remade alone in the dark and rebooted it into something else right i I think it's because they recognized what the fuck was going on with the movie so tying (laughs) it in wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense yeah honestly but I mean, I'm trying to remember what other video game movies he did. If he did anymore, I don't really think so. I think that's pretty much it that I can think of off the top of my head. Right. And his later work, like we said, it was a lot more political, and it was also a little more disturbing. Like he did a straight like slasher horror movie called Seed, and I think that there was a sequel to it, and it was a pretty brutal fucked up movie kind of yeah wow. that title just sounds fucked up it does seed. yeah that, that, that's the name of the killer seed seed that's his name and he's just basically this big brute who just goes around just randomly killing people for the fuck of it more or less oh, i thought he was knocking girls up you know putting a <laughs> seed inside <laughs> of them it sounds like a- no the, there, there's a pretty <laughs> protracted scene in that movie where he pretty much beats a woman's head methodically with a hammer like over and over again it's it, it gets pretty hardcore honestly yeah. And he also made another movie that's pretty fucked up. It was based on a true story. It was It's called Stoic. It's about a poker game in, in a prison cell between these uh, prison mates. They're, they're bunk mates. Cellmates, I should say. And it goes completely off the rails and somebody ends up getting completely like tortured and fucked up or whatever. The but <laughs> it... it it's presented in an interesting way because it has like interviews interspersed within the actual scenes in the prison cell. Interesting. interesting. Yeah, so so I have that movie, and we, we ought to check that out. I also have a movie called Attack on Darfur, which was based off of the Darfur massacre. And I heard that that's a pretty extreme movie in its own right, and I do believe Billy Zane is in that movie. Hmm. Yeah, Billy Zane, he's like the lead in that movie Zane or something. Man. Yeah. And yeah, that that has like a scene where they they're straight up like throwing babies on bayonets and shit or some pr- pretty fucked up shit. That sounds pretty. I mean, U- Uwe Boll, like I said, he's very hyperbolic. Like he's not afraid to really like show like grittiness in all of its glory. You know, but like the aforementioned mass shooting movies he did, I still can't remember the names of them. But I think they were just literally called Rampage or something like that. Right. But I mean, he, he he's known for just kind of going. straight 
straight into just dark territory, not giving a fuck. S- same same with his video game movies. I mean, he just jumps right into it. He and and I I think that in this movie he did a pretty okay job of like getting the tone right at least because th- these are cheesy games. Honestly, the dialogue is known for being even cheesier than Resident Evil. Like, if you can believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's pretty difficult to fucking one up something like, don't open that door. It's like, Chris is our old partner, you know. Did you ever seen Scooby Doo go in there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you go ever in seen there. Scooby Doo? Yeah, they play a lot of those tropes straight in this movie, but the straight they out of straight Romero up movie. mention Romero. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. They, they mentioned the Romero movies. Night, dawn, and day. Uh, yeah. It, it, like, the, yeah, that dude just straight up nerds out about it for a little bit. Right. Like in the middle of this zombie apocalypse. <laughs> what yeah, the then, fuck, man? Yeah, but then he get dies later by the dumb blonde. His head just gets snapped. Oh, yeah, that that's right. The, the, the eye candy chick. Yeah. Cynthia or whatever. Who wasn't even really that attractive. Uh, I don't think so. What was the name of that girl? Alicia. The t- Alicia. Alicia, yeah. Alicia, big tits. I, I knew you were thinking of. Oh, yeah. She, she was way more attractive. Oh, she was beautiful. That's Aura Grower, I think her name is. I Don't don't quote me on that. We'll have to look it up, maybe. Oh, she's but gorgeous. She, yeah, she, she's the most notable actress in this movie. But uh, the girl that plays Casper, she, or Ellie, what's her name, right? She She's from the Halloween movies. Yeah. Ellie Cornette, right? Yeah, Ellie Cornette. She was in Halloween 4 and 5. She was Danielle Harris's sister. Co-star, right? Fuck yeah, man. And they, I Halloween. remember those. Yeah, we, I remember we gotta those take you guys back and watch 4 and 5. Oh, yeah, seriously. We, we ought to watch the fucking Isn't that, aren't Halloween those, franchise. Aren't those the ones that are the return and the revenge of Michael Myers? Oh, yeah, and yeah, there's exactly. also Curse of Michael Myers. The Curse is the <laughs> Paul Rudd one. Yeah. Paul yeah. Rudd. I just watched like Man today. Again. Introducing Paul Rudd, right? Yeah, that was it's that was one, one of his, his first main roles. That was one of his first movies. Yeah, one of his first. I think he had commercial side work yeah. before that. Right? Now, what's interesting about Uwe Boll is a lot of the movies that he made, especially earlier in the two thousands, it was really made so he could take advantage of these loopholes in the German tax law that kind of allowed him to pull a Mel Brooks, the producer style thing, where he could literally make a profit even if his movie was shit and was a bomb or not. So he, he would actually get tax windfalls on this shit and make make more money back than what was initially put into it. Oh, that's so dirty. It's like, why even make a good movie? I know, right? I mean, he, he didn't need to. Why put in the effort? <laughs> But, I mean, like I said, later on, I mean, a lot of his work got better. I mean, it became more political, more focused. Like, the action scenes weren't as wonky as they are in House of the Dead. But, yeah, I mean, he actually made a great deal of money off of these movies. And and there's, like, the, the budgets were ridiculously cheap on most all of them, honestly. Yeah, you could tell. That's pretty funny. And another funny thing about Uwe Boll is that... He totally trolls his critics hard. Like there, there was an incident where he actually challenged one of his critics of his movies to a boxing match, and it actually happened. <laughs> and he whooped the motherfucker's ass. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, he whooped his ass straight up. Talked some shit and fucking cashed some checks, man. It's like, <laughs> goddamn, I don't think I want to try to step up to Uwe Ball. Because if you look at him, he's a pretty solid-looking German guy, honestly. Really? Like he, he talks with the, Z- the German accent like this. It's like it, it, his commentaries are pretty funny to listen to, honestly, because I mean he, he almost sounds like a stereotypical German, you know, like somebody doing a voice, kind of like doing an accent on purpose. Yeah, doing an accent on purpose. That's almost what he sounds like. But he's a straight up German citizen and everything. Like he he was born and raised in Germany. You're right. Yeah, he looks straight up German. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got that Teutonic look to him, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, Tommy was so sound always sounds like somebody's badly imitating whatever accent he has. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I still think he's mostly Polish. That that's what it, the sources seem to think. Yeah, he, hey, he seems to be Pol he's Polak all the way. We're meeting the criteria of our podcast. Oh yeah, that's right. Woo! We're talking about Tommy was so <laughs> the room reference. Ding! Yes. That'd be like our cinema sense. Like, I don't know. I, I yeah. yeah, I have a feeling we need to go ahead and get a little bell so that whenever we hit those marks, we just like, ding. <laughs> <laughs> like straight straight up man straight up but yeah i mean he's always uh talk shit to his critics man it, it's fucking hilarious that's awesome i'd like to see that what 
other kind of uh, confrontations did he get into? Oh, just mostly like online confrontations where he just talks shit to people, That's more or funny. less. I mean, I think he may have gotten to a couple of other fist fights, but I'm not sure. Don't don't quote me on that. But yeah, Uwe Ball is quite an interesting person in the world of film. Well, you know, truly, truly, his generation's Roger Corman. <laughs> I'll pretend to know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> Roger Corman, he was he is a legendary underground cult film director and and producer and he actually had a hand in start kickstarting some important careers like Francis Ford Coppola, Martin Scorsese. I think Spielberg worked on some of his movies oh. back in the day. Like yeah, he he actually brought some important directors to the fray. Like like for their for their first time and everything. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, it, it's it's actually really cool. Look look, up, look him up. He's actually a very interesting uh, person in the world of cinema. But this is a video game movie, and ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to tell you that those can be shit sometimes. Absolutely right? Absolutely shit. It's a shit storm. I mean. <laughs> It's practically a joke in Hollywood yes. by this point that if you're going to try to develop a video game movie, it's probably not going to work out. Yeah, but you know what, though? I mean, personally, I know you may disagree, but yeah. I like the Assassin's Creed movie. You I know, thought it was interesting. It built on the universe. Right. But I think it really it didn't stand on its own as a movie. Right. Yeah, but, you know, I still haven't really seen the, that movie yet. I Michael think, Fassbender. Uh, yeah. With Fassbender. Fassbender. Oh, man, Michael Fassbender is in that? He's the yeah, main he's, character. He's the main character. Oh, holy shit. I think you'll like it, bro. Fa- Fassbender's a hell of an actor. And they did the same thing they did in the early Assassin's Creed games, where when you go into the Animus, your ancestor looks exactly like you. So oh, wow. Michael Fassbender both plays the the guy that's in the present day and his ancestor back during the Spanish Inquisition. So that was a pretty cool movie. I mean, at least just building on the universe, being an Assassin's Creed fan. The other recent one that was better than most yeah I, I really think you need to enumerate what video game adaptations have actually been remotely good <laughs> yeah I, I think that's the first point is what what are examples of a good video game adaptation well, like the first iron I mean, man the iron first man? iron man yeah. what <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a game <laughs> they didn't yeah, make was. games based off the movies Did i'll tell you what it? uh laura croft tomb raider you know what? Oh. You're not wrong about yeah, that. Yeah, you're right. The Tomb Raider movies that right. those were those were kind of cheesy in their own right, but they were actually a lot of fun to Angelina watch. Well, we're not even, we're not even talking about yeah the Angelina Jolie but ones. I was actually yeah. going to mention the other semi decent one was the other Tomb Raider reboot. I mean, as a movie, not really, but I, yeah. I really respect that they were doing right. an adaptation of the 2013 reboot, which I really, yeah, really, yeah. really like. What was that? But that I was wish a, it stuck to the storyline. Alicia Vikander, right? Yeah, Alicia yeah, Vikander. that's who it was. That's who. I mean, it more. was all right, but I, I think a lot of people didn't understand what it was. It was right. Like, who who is this new girl? Why doesn't she look like Angelina Jolie? Right. Well, yeah, it's I mean, because t- the the video game was a reboot that went down to the nitty and gritty, and yeah. It, it, it was much greater. It was really, really awesome, actually. Yeah, and the problem is, is people were expecting Angelina Jolie, and they're expecting her character, but that's not who she is in the new games. Well, yeah, the video gamers understood, because that the was the gamers, whole point. Right. But in the She's movie good enough. adaptation, it just wasn't as clear, right. I think. I don't think a yeah. lot of casual movie fans just I don't didn't know. get it. In my mind's eye, it seems to me that Angelina Jolie just looks the most like Laura Croft. Well, the original character, yeah. right? Because the reboot timeline is a completely different thing. But, but yeah, Angelina Jolie looks a lot like. In fact, yeah. some of the newer games be. in the older franchise, they mo- ended up modeling her character after Angelina Jolie. Well, and, and originally Laura Croft was modeled off of a a model named Rona Mitra. Yeah, just that's who she was. Something. She was actually based off of a real life person. You can definitely see likeness. where Angelina Jolie kind of influences the later games. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, look at those titties, bro. <laughs> Angelina <laughs> Jolie triangle? doesn't even have tits, though. That's yeah. what's funny is they they had to increase her breast size because the are you kidding me? They did is you know known for her. Well, giant yeah. Breasts. In the wow. original Lara Croft games, she had these triangle titties. Triangle titties. <laughs> His from pyramid Golden Eye. Yeah, this, from this, Golden Eye. This so. is where we're going, ladies and gentlemen. We're going into Laura Croft's polygonal boobs. Well, and speaking of titties, titties. Yeah, this titties. movie had it was an Lots excuse to make titties. Motion titties. It was an excuse for titties. That's exactly, exactly what it was. for boobies. I mean, it's like every every hand wave in this movie. Okay. That's like okay, 
I can deal with that scene because there's titties. Right. Yeah. Titties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't care. Saw titties. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my God, we're a bunch of idiots. Boobies, 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 boobies. <laughs> I know we need like feminism in this podcast. Yeah, we need lots of feminism. I think that's why we need Megan up in here. <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> she she'd just be like, "You guys are just fucking." Yeah. Uh. yeah, we maybe we just need like a female here to just like let let us know when we're getting to be too much of boys. Yeah, right? we're starting to be guys. But to be that's, guys, that's our craft. Though. Yeah. That's <laughs> why would we need somebody telling us what to do? We need, oh, 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 oh shit! How to hone our own craft, uh, hey, man? No. We we need a monitor. I think you guys just need to let loose and be free, <laughs> and just <laughs> let whatever comes out naturally. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm getting married, so see that's the most I feel bad for you. Love I mean, and marriage, love and marriage, <laughs> nah. Robert, that is the most you've ever talked in one sitting. That was great. I know, one right? Sentence, right? That's amazing. <laughs> that's I, that's I think we need to get you more liquor. I think we've talked <laughs> like, more about gentlemen? bullshit you than we have this movie. I, I know, right? Well, We're just bullshitting. But th- that's this. Uh, that's what's good about this movie is that it's bullshit. Exactly what I was going to say, bro. This movie is bullshit. So but it's, talk bullshit it's about it. fun and entertaining. Can you right? tell that I'm not drunk, that but, I just needed to talk, though? But, <laughs> but going back to video game movies, I mean, I don't know. Like, I guess we say that the Laura Croft movies are kind of examples of good video game movies. Uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll say give the, them something. The first Mortal Kombat, though. I it's mean, it's great for reasons entirely different than the game is great. Yeah. But it's not the Mortal Kombat movie the world needed. I, because Mortal Kombat is gory and that, we need an R rated. That's why I, I think movie. I said it uh, back on the season finale last season, and I'll still say it right now. Ricky O is the best Mortal Kombat movie out there. The story of Luke yeah. Kang. Because that, that's, yeah, that's tr- pretty much Luke Kang. Mm. I mean, if they would have had the bicycle kick, it would have been perfect. I mean, he would have been a perfect Luke Kang. All right. Isn't there plans for like a Mortal Kombat reboot? I think so. I, I mean, especially with the release time. of Mortal Kombat yeah. 11. So yeah. if, if if Freakio was Liu Kang, then uh, is Liberty uh, Chung Li from Chung Li, Street, Street Fighter? Ki- <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess so. Yeah, Street Fighter. That's another that's example. Another one. I there's a lot of people that think that that movie is shit, but I love that fucking movie. <laughs> really, I never I seen could, it. I could put that on. It's got Jean Claude Van Damme. It's got Van, Van Damme in it. Van, Van Damme. Damme. Van Damme, dude. And 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 also, fucking uh, Gomez Adams himself. I forgot the actor's name, but uh, Jesus Christ, how can I forget the actor's name? What like, was that movie, The Alamo? He played in like the eighties. Yeah. I remember watching that in How like, the fuck am I high. going to fucking forget his name? That guy He's was a fucking great legendary. Actor. Great actor. I mean, he he brought gravitas to M. Bison. Are you talking about the Street Fighter movie? Yeah, the Street Fighter movie, yeah. Straight up. I guess uh we're we're having a stoner induced brain fart. Uh, maybe uh, maybe Jean a little Claude bit of and Raul Julia. Raul Julia, fuck. There you go. That, guy's, that guy is great amazing. Actor. Great actor. That guy, that guy was he. He did that movie just for his children. He was dying of cancer when he made that movie. What? He, he was straight. He he died right after it came out. He died in the nineties. Oh man! And I, like he he did that for his kids. He 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 just wanted to do something just to get a paycheck and do something for his kids. But goddamn, like that that scene when he's with Chun Li and he, he straight up. Like they're talking about when he came up to his village. It's like for you that was the most significant and important moment in your life. For me. It was Tuesday. <laughs> That's cold. It was a Tuesday. That's straight cold. That's just saying it meant nothing to me. I, I raised your village and it didn't mean shit to me. <laughs> Damn. That I love that. Or or that of course the memeified, of course. That that's pretty much a meme. I, I think nostalgia critic kind of saw to that. Hmm. Like it it it's very meme stuff, honestly. Me, 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 me. Now, have you guys seen the Double Dragon movie? No. I have not. Oh, seen cartoons. I cannot believe that y'all haven't seen Double Dragon. That is pure nineties cheese. It's amazing. They're a video game and cartoons, right? It, it's it's so nineties. I mean you can you can throw that three ninjas and, and what what's another good example of a so nice like uh, hackers. You could put those movies on and it'd be perfect. Oh, it's got um uh, Mark DeCasco's in it. He's uh he's in Hawaii five O. Yeah, yeah. I know him, I know him. Yeah, but Double Dragon is a very painfully nineties movie. You know, kind of like Tank Girl, sort of less. I, I don't know if y'all ever saw Tank Girl. That, that is fun shit with Lori Petty. Mm, Chick nope. with the goggles on the cover. And oh, that movie you were talking about also has Robert Patrick in it. 
Robert Patrick. No shit. Yeah, main character. Nice, nice. And also, remember when they made an Angry Birds movie? Yes, I oh, saw that. Yeah, it. it was all right. Y'all, y'all realize they're going to make a sequel to that? Seriously? Mm-hmm. It, it made enough money to warrant a sequel. I guess okay. that, that's I mean. a that's a game that hasn't even been fucking culturally relevant in how long? <laughs> like yeah, when the, the mo- Angry Birds came out. movie was a weird timing. It, it was, was very weird. It was it, like Angry Birds wasn't really a thing anymore. Right. Well, it was like when the iPhone first came out, popular. Like when apps first started coming out, that was one of the first like games everyone downloaded on their phone. Yeah, and past that, that was it. Yeah. What's Y'all funny were- is it was just like the the catapult game that we played on on, on our computers on using Flash. Yeah, yeah. It, it it was pretty much a rip off. I know what you're talking about. The it, catapult castle game where you shoot yeah. the catapult and destroy yeah, the castle. It, it's pretty much the same shit as that, pretty much. But yeah, that that was a very strange movie. I mean, it's it's like I mean, what was the point of it? It wasn't bad. <coughs> I mean, it, it was all right. It was a good kids movie, but you know. Yeah. The timing yeah. was kind of weird. Food Fighters 2. <laughs> Food <laughs> Fighters 2. Come on. The fuck? And there was a Doom movie as well, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah, The Rock was in there. The video yeah. games. Too. And, and there there was a scene in that movie, not unlike this movie, where they totally aped the first person uh, view of the game, actually. Dude, Dwayne Don- Johnson also recently did the Rampage movie. Yeah, that's another video game. That's right. That's Ooh. another recent video uh, game movie. He did adaptation. Jumanji. Game. Yeah, that's not really a video. Not a video game, game but it was it's based on bo- another it's movie. It's a board game. Yeah, it's, it's a, a board game. game. Yeah, yeah, that's and, true. And that's and true. The new one, it is a video game. It's also exactly. a book, Jumanji. So yeah, yeah, that's game right. And book, double game, book, movie. Yeah, huh? Yeah, and Rampage that was based off of the old school '80s action game where they turned into a bunch of kaiju and they yes. destroy a city. Like you have Rampage World Tour on. N64, right? N64, bro. That is such a fun game. Dude, I used to play Rampage. That was fun. I love that shit, man. Three-player action? Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. They eventually released uh, new games where they were they had more characters and everything. Just like, God damn, you man. out, play those games, dude. Is uh, Dwayne Johnson one of those characters? <laughs> oh, I don't no. know. <laughs> N- do y'all ever w- remember a game called Wing Commander? Mm-hmm. It was yeah, a- yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, they, they they made a movie adaptation of that that's kind of known for being real shit. Like is it shit. terrible? Shit. Wow. Yeah. And recently there was the Warcraft movie. I mean they they had to go into World of Warcraft a little bit, right? You know what? I saw the trailer for that. I never saw the movie itself, but from the trailer it it seemed like a decent movie. I mean I've played a little bit of World of Warcraft, not much, but a little. I yeah, vaguely yeah. remember that happening. It's like that was, was a, that was that actually a thing? <laughs> that was like 2016, right? I think was, I've never seen 2017. Yeah, it, it was as recently as a few years ago. I think yeah. something else was at, v- out. at the very least. Yeah, yeah. There was something other big movie that was coming out, so no, no one was paying all, attention yeah. to it. We all had our minds focused now, on it. Now, why do y'all think Hollywood can't get video game adaptations right? Now, what, what, why do you think that is? They they can get comic book adaptations right, but they can't get video games right. They Maybe never stick to the game. Right. Yeah. I've yet to see a video Sky- game. A movie, Pilgrim. a video game to movie adaptation Sorry. that completely captures the game as it is. They just yeah. change so much. It's always right. a loosely based storyline and never, you know, I understand with adaptations like book to movie, you make yeah. some changes. But in the case of video game to movie, it's always like major changes well, where it's not the same storyline. Well, well it, it seems to me that Hollywood can't get video game adaptations right. But they can make movies about video games that are pretty okay. You like like Wreck It Ralph, right? Yeah. You know, or even that there was a documentary about the Donkey Kong World Record came out, like King of Kong. Ah, oh. and that that was actually a pretty well received movie. Yeah, right. Yeah. and of course Grandma's Boy. Ah, Grandma's Boy is all about it, it's a stoner movie about gamers, and and it's perfect. What's that honestly. one gaming movie with the uh, Adam Sandler? Pixels? Pixels. 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 I heard that Pixels. was that great though. It was funny. It was okay. It oh, moments, hey, how about yeah. The Wizard? You know, California. The Wizard. <laughs> it's like Power Glove on. <laughs> the Infinity Gauntlet. Or, uh, and, and of course, Ready as, Player One. As we're going <laughs> to do, uh, <gasps> Ready Player yes, One. Yes, Ready Player One was good. VR. That was a good movie, bro. Hey, we missed one adaptation, and we're going to do that next season. Super Mario Brothers. Oh, You're that's right. right. Yeah, let's not go into that one, because yeah, that, that's next season, and it's going to be a lot of fun going into a that. A lot. But uh, yeah. personally, like Bo, can you think of a a your favorite like movie like video game that you could make into a movie? Like, what would that be? 
Well, I don't know. I mean, I mean, we forgot to talk about the Resident Evil movies. Oh, Resident of Evil was always a oh, favorite. We left my, out Cloak yeah. and Dagger. Cloak right. and Dagger, exactly. Classic, dude. Yeah, of course. exactly. Cloak and Dagger, I saw that. Not the TV show, the old yeah. 80s movie. Yeah, I saw the movie. It's filmed in San Antonio. Dude, what, what if they made a video game adaptation of the Oregon Trail? <laughs> <laughs> you died, you died, of died of dis- dysentery. dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> Teens looking for fun at a rave on an island full of zombies. Awful zombies looking for one thing. I just want your flesh. They are everywhere. They are fast. They fight to the end and beyond. Best I reckon the story goes, there was once some crazy Spanish padre who was banished from Spain hundreds of years ago. Come closer, Captain. I cannot see your face. You know why I was banished from Spain? Your experiments are not of God. They say he murdered the crew of the San Cristobal, enslaved the natives of this island, and killed whoever came here ever since. Some say he still does. It was my fault! It was my fault! Were you here? Did you see it? Did you see me watch them rip her apart? It's not gonna happen again. We're gonna get out of here. Coming 2003. A movie based on one of the most popular video games of all times, The House of the Dead. Like well, what about the viewer? Did. Now let, let's talk about House of the Dead itself. Now, there's a lot of shit elements to this movie. What what is the one element that you think it gets the most wrong? Honestly, I think the movie just does a an injustice to itself trying to take itself seriously. I think the major problem is, you know, like I said before, if you take away all of the exposition and all of the plot that's there, you could have a movie that is ironic and actually is enjoyable. And this movie is enjoyable, but it's like at least you could respect it. (laughs) Yeah. It's an enjoyable bad movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be an enjoyable good movie if this was all ironic and just stripped away the plot (laughs) well i think there's some instances where it tries to be kind of ironic but it it, they're actually a little more interested in trying to kind of encapsulate the feel of the game like like for instance there there was the scene where it was an obvious rail shooter with the uh yes with the point of view and everything it even had the rails on the on the fucking bottom which is a reference to what they're called rail shooters the actual plot doesn't resemble the game at all because no it's like they had this Island of the Dead movie. This zombie, it's literally the name of the island. Yeah. De, la, yeah. de la Muerte. That's Spanish for death because you don't speak Mexican. No. In case yeah. you don't speak Mexican. <laughs> oh, Clint Howard. Oh, Clint Howard. I love, I love him so much. The only good this. to come out of this movie. Only good thing. And we were robbed of more Clint Howard zombies. Robbed. It was robbed. stolen from us. That, that There should have been a huge ass uh, climax between Kirk and Salish. Even better than what they had. That was the problem with it this sh- movie. There was so much should have done. There's so many times yeah. this movie were like, they should have done that. They should have done this. They should have gone further with this. They shouldn't have done this. You like, know, like, there's there's so much of that. Like for instance, a lot of the acting in this movie. I mean, th- yeah, the delivery is very dry in most moments and wooden in others. But and because then, because of the way that this movie is paced, it still comes together and it's still hilarious. It is. And you got those dry moments, and then there's some moments where they're just like over the top for no reason. Oh yeah, it's, especially the scene that we're watching now, where it's the pretty much the huge zombie battle right yeah we're watching liberty the girl with the american flag go-go suit die and, 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 and he just watches her yeah homeboy just watches her and he just has a look on his face like oh that's tough kid tough. sorry about that yeah. man. and then he goes through this like sequence which you think is him being motivated to go save right her. but then it's just a flashback of everything that happened 
and and then it just drops. It's yeah. like this upbeat it, music. It's, it's an excuse for excessive editing. That's right. what it is. I was going to say, Bo, didn't you say there was like 300 plus cuts at in least this three, one scene? At least 300 cuts in, in, this, in this battle sequence right this here. This battle sequence, exactly. Just in this sequence alone, there's a shit ton of edits here. All and, 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 and at least two of these characters that get a goddamn game over fucking screen. <laughs> yes, that's yes, so funny. Game over screens. That's hilarious, and right? the constant cuts to <laughs> gameplay, too. Yes. It's just so weird. Just Random arcade throughout. scenes. There's your Halloween four or five chick. <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah the the weird a, arcade shots that are random. There, the random clips from the games. Unnecessary. And what's funny is a couple of those clips are from one of the later games, while the rest of them are from the first game. That's funny. Because I mean, there were like three other games on this, and they they released a couple of them on Nintendo Wii. And one other movie. Yeah, yeah, the one other movie. That's that's right. There was a sequel to this. So, I don't know why, but <laughs> so here's the question here: Who's the main character again? Yeah, there's like there's never a real main protagonist here, right. right? During the movie, it changes so much. I mean, you hear Rudy narrating it in the beginning, which I actually missed the first time because but, it was so insignificant. But you don't yeah. see Rudy until he, halfway through the movie. Exactly, you don't get to see him till halfway through when he's the rave has already been destroyed. And, 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 get there. and there's a previous relationship with that girl Alicia, right? That's and never they, really expounded upon. Well, they almost revive it again near the end. Yeah, and then the weird end scene where he like reincarnates her yeah what, what the, the fuck, fuck? they don't even show any of that they don't and they and just like imply it all but you know what's the funniest part is whenever any of these characters try to get sexual oh it's so Every cringy time. right and that's always when the zombies attack, attack. like yep. like the humpity bumpity <laughs> <laughs> it's time to do the humpity bumpity one two th- uh, beautiful vel- beautiful velcro beautiful velcro. <laughs> velcro beautiful velcro yes oh my god that is hilarious one two three humpity dumpity oh my god <laughs> that's a trauma uh, hey, dude. <laughs> i think it's about to rain we should find some place before we get wet. It's like, and she's all like, too, too late. late. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely trauma universe. Oh my god, that's total trauma, right? Yeah. Oh my god, that, that's like Toxie having sex with his girlfriend. Oh, and Hilarious. we can't forget the scene where we one of your main chicks gets her legs chopped oh, off. Oh yeah, Casper. Yeah. Yes. She, she just randomly gets her legs chopped off and she dies and everything. You said she was an actor in Halloween, right? Yeah. Robert, what, what Halloween's? Four and five. Four and five. That, that's, respectively, that's Curse and Revenge, right? It's the, the Return of Michael Myers Return, part four. Yeah. And part five is... Uh, the Revenge, right? Revenge. And then revenge. the Curse, right? Curse is Paul Rudd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Donald Pleasant's last film. Yeah. Right. And if anybody wants a... Uh, uh, overview of the Halloween films. They can check out our season premiere. Check episode. out the first Halloween yeah. and the 2018 at the theater episode that we yeah. did. Yeah, ch- check that one out. Mm-hmm. That one is good. Check it. Yeah. And the screenplay to this is just so all over the place, right? It, so much happens, but nothing happens at all. Dude, that's a really good way of explaining it. I, I know, mean, right? Nothing is really going on, but so is everything at once. Yeah, there's all these weird relationships between the characters that you know always seem forced they yeah. never they come out of out of left field pretty much like for instance between rudy and alicia it's like what the fuck is this Why, where's supposed this to be, coming from yeah they were like exes and they get together and then karma and simon and explain to me why there's a character named liberty a character named karma karma like what, what, what tyranny. Is yeah, tyranny yeah, yeah. In, in the deleted scene like liberty's friend is this girl this topless girl named tyranny and she has a goddamn hammer and sickle soviet symbol tattooed over her boob well, it's where's like, the logic in this it's supposed to be some kind of weird symbolism. I don't know. To what? I, gu- I guess it was some type of post 9 11 commentary or something oh, weird. What like are the that. odds that you'd have three girls that have names of like actual, you know, things? Exactly. Concepts. They, yeah, they're, they're, they're like they're like fucking virtues or something like that, more or less. Well, tyranny's not a virtue. That's the more of a vice. Were these parents' classmates too? And I they don't were just know. Like <laughs> dope or something? Hippies? Or, what do you want to name your kids? You know, you know what? Maybe they had a uh, community like. Our community, like yeah. Lake Hills. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, how about that one song that they keep playing throughout this movie? That weird rap rock. What song. even is that song? What, what was the name of the the band that was? It was some weird, it's insignificant. Some just weird third tier rap metal. You know new what? New metal shit. That's how you describe this movie in one word: insignificant. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, no, I, I think the guys at uh, We Hate Movies, they call that shit butt rock. Butt rock. It's total, total or butt metal. And, and I think that that totally applies because it even has that one little, <laughs> that one little passage like, nah, 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 nah. No, 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 no. It's like, oh god, that that is like the cheapest corn ripoff I've ever heard. That's terrible. And I mean, the location itself, like the location of the original game, that was supposed to be this sprawling mansion, not unlike Resident Evil. Yeah, but it, it, here it's just this tiny little house. Well, it's like they had to have a justification to call it House of the Dead. So exactly. they're like, okay, guys, make sure there's a house somewhere on the island, and then we can call it House of the Dead. The house of the yeah, because I mean, this, like I said, this this doesn't resemble the game plot at all. You know, and the game didn't really have much plot either. But not at all. They didn't even you know ad- adhere to what was there. Yeah. They they dropped the uh, the Kyrian name at the end. Yeah, and th- that's a tenuous link to the original games. Because the char- right. it's not even the same character. Because no. it's Roy Kurian who ends up being his father in the second one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is weird, but I I think they were actually changing that, and they probably just couldn't get the actors back, so they just I don't know copped out. <laughs> yeah, and the creature design on the zombies, Robert. What do you think of that? What are your thoughts on the actual creature designs? They, they I I saw on the behind the scenes featurette they had like. Pretty much three different tiers. They had like the recently deceased, then they had the ones that had been there for a little while, and then they've had like the really desiccated, uh, decayed ones that are like the conquistadors that were, that were originally there. Right. You know what? I watched what, what, that. What, what, what do you think, Robert? Uh, you know, I really didn't see that this movie too much. I only seen it once. You only saw this once. We just watched it, dude. Didn't well, I guess I didn't see it long enough to remember. So. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. there there was too many types of zombies. There were like there were water zombies, there were moss zombies, there were regular zombies. Yeah, and that was like uh, in the game, and they right. talk about that. I watched the behind the scenes yeah. feature with Bo. Yeah, and a lot of practical effects were used in this movie. Apparently, one of the guys that worked on the Romero films was working on this one, right? No, no that he, they were just there. Uh, that was Tom Savini. He was there as a as an interview, more or less. Wait, you know? so he wasn't actually working on no, it? No, I mean, he, he's just worked on some really legendary zombie movies, you know, like Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, like all, all that oh, stuff. I thought they were saying that he worked on this one, huh? No. Oh, man, it would have been great if he would have worked on this one. <laughs> it's, it's beneath him, sorry. It's, right. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's beneath Savini, <laughs> totally. Th- this would be beneath Nicotero, even. Well, they had him and Romero in that feature, yeah. which is like, isn't this kind of beneath them even to talk about? <laughs> Or acknowledge. Oh, R- R- Romero was so into the zombie thing. I mean, he created it that, I mean, he was pretty much had to talk about it, you know? It's, it's pretty much required of him in, in a way. Good old George. May he rest in peace. Hopefully like, we'll seriously. Watch the first Night Living Dead. Now, this is a pretty gory movie, guys. I mean, what, what did y'all think about the actual practical effects as far as the gore was concerned? There, there, there were some headshots here that were pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah, there was the the stomp shot at the, the end. Yeah, that oh, one. Yeah. I was just stomps that. on his head. Yeah. Uh, he there, slices his head off first before they stomp on it. Yeah, that was a pretty decent decapitation. Like Robert is our resident filmmaker. What did you think about the gore effects? Like, would you have done anything differently there? Like, would you have gone for something more realistic? Like, what do you think? No, we got Pro Tools and Final Cut. I mean, you see yeah. what? Yeah, the four the fourteenth and fifteenth season of Supernatural does do just with the effects. Oh yeah, alone. it's yeah. crazy, it's bro. Amazing, yeah. dude. It's amazing. But how, how does that relate to the gore effects here? Like, what do you think of that? You know what? Still a low budget indie film, and it's everything I love. So I would yeah. not discredit this at all. Oh uh, yeah, I mean honestly, that I think that the low budget really adds to the. To the I, gore I, a I like bit. it though, right? Because you know? because it's cheesy, you know. Yeah, it, it, I still it, love it. It evokes a lot of the old school gore of like classic horror and exploitation films from the seventies and eighties. I and mean, everything. it's two thousand three. Look at it now; it's sort of cheesy, right? And what's the hottest yeah. thing that came out? You know, right? Yeah. And, and it's like you said; it's like because of that, you want to love this movie. You want to yeah. see this as like a cheesy, gory movie that's like stupid and low budget, and that's what what's enjoyable about it. That's, that's why it's enjoyable. That's why we can all still watch it, right? And that's why we yeah. we continue watching it while we're still talking about it. Right? We didn't do that with with any other movies we don't like, like uh, yeah. I, I mean, we Master Disguise. <laughs> we usually <laughs> we usually have them playing in the background, you know. Yeah. But th- this is uh, the first time that we've actually just kind of sat there and like, hey, this is. Fun. 
fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we have it muted with subtitles on, and it's on repeat, you know, just so it'll stay repeating during the podcast. But Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm still watching this while everybody's talking. That's what I'm getting at. It's it's rewatchable. It's just still a shit movie. Yeah. It doesn't make it any less shit. It's just rewatchable, and it's an, it's enjoyable to hang out with people and laugh at it because yeah. it's stupid. Oh, it, it's a total get drunk with or get stoned with friends kind of movie. Right. For sure. Like, totally. It, it, just, it's, it's more fun with other people. I just want to go to Half Price Books and pile up the low budget collection you know i know man it's like right. th- those it are so much do fun <laughs> th- th- those are the best kind of drinking movies honestly one of those nights you know oh yeah i'm telling you we need to do a drinking game with the room one of these days oh fuck yeah we'll get so <laughs> wasted i swear to god now as much as this is a horror movie it's also an action movie and that that's something that uve ball actually does rather well i think is oh. action oh my god the think? slow motion action scenes yeah are like the that best. Like, like that weird rotating camera effect yes w- w- have y'all seen that in any other movies the matrix no that seems it, like something kind of in the matrix game. yeah matrix. it was in the matrix but it was used to a different effect there right I think. this one was to implicate that it's based off the game the arcade game i think that was yeah. like for instance the game over was screen that's what they did they would show the character like standing before they're dead and the then countdown. circles around them yeah the countdown the coins yeah. insert yeah. tokens insert coins insert <laughs> tokens right <laughs> same thing here like whenever they have a slow-mo kill every once in a while one character only a couple characters got this but it was that like epic the, kill the, the, so yeah. there's a slow-mo scene but like and it circles around them what was that for Right. Why was that necessary? It was to accentuate the action on the scene, Fatality. I would imagine. Right. Babality. And right. it was an excuse to call it a, you know, it's based off of an arcade game. Yeah. That and was also, the only way they can excuse that. And also, is this one of the first movies that had fast zombies in it? Like, other than the, they were of fast. the Dead remake? They, they were, they were, they were fast. fast. You're right. They were quick. They could live underwater, live in moss. Yeah. Because you, you have to remember that fast zombies are kind of a recent invention. Right. As recent as the last, like, 10 or 15 years. Right. Zombie they, movies. They're always slow and mindless and useless, and they and can't do much. Yeah. There's the idea. Yeah. In more recent media, there's the idea that, like, the newer zombies are still fast because their muscles have an atrophied, but right. the older zombies are the ones that are like sluggish and That's how Walking Dead takes it. Um it's Last of Us too. Last yeah. of Us, yeah. Yeah. Uh World War Z, I think, was that way. Actually no, they were just fast zombies. I don't in remember general. anything about World War Z. No, honestly. they were just that, that, fast that, that, besides zombies. Peter Capaldi that, that, being that, that, that's good because there's nothing notable about that movie, honestly. Yeah, it's so forgettable, right? Yeah. There, there's a reason why they canned the the second one with David with Fincher. Brad Pitt. There's a reason. <laughs> yeah, I remember Brad Pitt and what about I am Legend were zombies, that. dude. I am Legend zombies were fast. Right? I am Legend zombies were fast. Fuck, dude. But were they really zombies? That's what I was getting at. I think at they're more night, like demons. Right? I think the shit. sun. I mean, at night they were more like zombies. To, right? to me, they were more mutants, not yeah. Zombies. Well, well, that's in kind this like movie, Resident Evil. some sort of a T virus going on, right? Yeah, but uh, to me, it was more like what was happening in Twenty Eight Days Later, where it was, was kind of like a rage virus. Just it just mutated them a little more. Mutated. What's interesting about this movie is that they're they are zombies because they're you know reincarnated. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like there's this character who's reincarnating every single one of them. He's yeah, doing, yeah, he, he, he made this serum, right? Yeah, he made that serum, and he managed. Which they didn't explain at all. Oh, uh, it's it's a very weird explanation for why he's doing what he's doing. Like, right. it, uh, it's pretty much just for the lulls, pretty much, and Truthfully. for immortality. Truthfully, yeah. And he, was it, why, why do you, why are you doing this to be immortal? Yeah, uh, I mean. Because to be immortal? To be immortal, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Homo Homeboy actually <laughs> asks that of him. It's like, that's that's like another example of that dialogue, man. It just comes in and it's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? I feel like somebody fudged their lines there. Yeah, uh, probably. I said, why do you do this to live forever? Uh, to live forever? I mean, I mean, how else? Yeah. <laughs> now, the most action-packed scene we already talked about a little bit it was the battle scene outside of the house with everybody. Oh, of course. I mean, wh- what was what were some of y'all's favorite moments from that? 
well, before that was when they got their arsenal was when Kirk got his box off the ship that had Cuban cigars and yeah. a grenade launcher and a bunch of weapons in it oh, that just happened yeah. to be on his ship, you know? I, that, that whole little montage where everybody's arming themselves yes. and everything, that, that's pretty classic, honestly. I, I found that funny because I knew at some point in this movie we were going to have a zombie killing scene, but they can't do that without weapons. So I was waiting for the arsenal scene, and, and that and, was an interesting one. And of course, they had to have a dick joke there of course every time. <laughs> you know like mine's bigger it's mine's like, oh bigger. god every time yes oh my god and my one of my favorite scenes like what you asked my favorite action scene is i think liberty and and then just like not even using her gun just yeah. like fucking kicking the shit out. Yeah. is she a martial yeah. arts artist it's, i mean right? what's going on it's here? so crazy how randomly badass everybody becomes yes. here right uh, during that scene karma the token black character this movie yeah throws an axe at one of the zombies like it's nothing like Seriously. she throws it like, that takes skill to throw or, like a heavy axe or that, or that scene where homegirl uh, dodges that axe that the yes. zom- flipping zombie scene she, and she shoots him in midair she does this it's weird like some, some matrix bullshit matrix exactly <laughs> what the fuck is that Oh, and when Simon kills himself with a gunpowder for no reason. Yeah, th- it's like, dude, you could have gotten away from that. You weren't getting bit or anything. I know. He, he could have literally pistol whipped those zombies away from him. Uh, that's what I'm getting at. This movie has so many useless deaths. Just Charlie's so Angels, they have slow deaths. motion run right there. Oh, yeah. Slow we're playing run. that scene. And they did my boy Captain Kirk dirty. Oh, hell oh, yeah. yeah. He man. was a badass. They should have had him fighting the Clint Howard zombie. That would have been <sighs> yes. amazing. Yeah, uh, that would have been perfection. Well, we should have seen more Clinton Howard zombie too. We oh, only saw we, him for like three seconds, oh, and that then was he so, shoots his ass. That was so sad because that would have that had so much potential. So much. They should have had him during that battle scene, and he should have been fucking people up. That's what I'm getting at. I told y'all earlier. There's so many should haves with this movie. Yeah, they should have done this. Clint Howard done that. is a fantastic actor. He yeah. really is, man. Yeah. Now. One of the features on this movie, like, we got to talk about this a little bit. I watched it with you. Yeah, it's it's this prepare for Zombat behind the scenes thing where they allegedly take the actresses from this movie, or at least like four of them. Like I think it's uh, Casper, Liberty, Alicia, and Karma. They go into training, right? They, they go into a training thing. The, the first thing they have them do is come over to the production studio that, that produced this, and they play the House of the Dead game, first of all. Which is like, I mean, I, I guess you need to at least know what the game is. The old arcade pump shotty game. That but whole thing just seemed kind of condescending and just slightly misogynist. Or at you least, know what I mean? At least just straight sexist. Yeah. You know? like, like, it is hilarious. They go to this paintball field and they, they take these production assistants, like straight up, like dress them up like zombies. They don't give them any protective gear and they have these women just straight shooting at them. And, and and then they and then they turn around and they go and get paintball guns and the zombies just attack them and start shooting all these actresses and, and nobody <laughs> has face masks on it's like how did nobody lose an eye or anything like protect, that protect the money maker seriously man <laughs> seriously yeah this yeah, yeah. And, and th- these are actresses man that's they, why they sign the contract because of the face exactly that that's their fucking money maker seriously. The other weird thing is that they have this random character there. He's like the supposedly this zombie combat expert, and it, it's it's played by one of the producer's friends, and it's so weird. And then at the end, it just ends with a fucking hot tub scene. Yeah. It's just another excuse to get everybody in bikinis and into a hot tub. That's funny. I mean, I enjoyed <laughs> it, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I mean, other than the cheesiness behind it. And, and at the beginning, they were trying to go all reality show style. I mean, I mean, they, they were trying to show every, them like taking a shower and shit or like brushing their teeth or eating breakfast at six in the morning. Reality yeah, show. They got You're them right. up at like they, the Fear Factor style. Yeah, they, like, they got them up at six in the morning to go to a fucking production studio to play House of the Dead three. Damn. You what the s- fuck? Yeah, you get somebody up at six in the morning to do makeup early. Yeah, seriously. Tr- and also, like going through the trouble of actually dressing up a bunch of production assistants as zombies. Get some field work in, some paintball. Yeah, and you know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's starting to rain where we're at, so I guess we're going to go ahead and start wrapping things up. I mean, what did you all think about the actual video game aesthetics of the movie itself? I mean, I appreciate the representation. Yeah. Uh, but it was really weird with just the 
the the game clips just yeah, the, suddenly the game intruding. Play clips is so jarring. It's like okay, so so what wh what is the point there? I've never seen a video game movie do that. I know. And I guess in the featurette they said something to the effect of no zombie movie has ever done this before. Well, yeah, they got that right, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's I supposed mean, to look more real with an old video game. With that? just because it yeah. hasn't been done doesn't mean that it should. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, it, it's just jarring and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense at all. But and of course, there's the aforementioned uh, rail shooting scenario that they the scene that they have with Karma, Alicia, and Rudy and. I mean th that that takes the whole you know behind the whole rail thing and everything like it, it it captures that rather perfectly I think yeah but it's also very cheesy and okay well, what's what's everybody's final thoughts on this personally it wasn't that great of a movie I mean it was fun to watch but it, it was kind of a bad movie oh it, it's a bad movie but it's a fun bad movie. oh it's a fun bad movie yeah That's you want to get at. high or drunk and, and right. just watch this and and just chill with your friends you know something you probably have on the background skip the exposition just yeah. watch the action <laughs> right oh it, so, it's a it's a perfect get drunk and stone with your buddies kind of movie right so this is one of those movies that it's hard to really give a rating or a feel for because you just have to watch it to yourself to yeah. understand Ooh. i wouldn't say not watch it I, I would definitely say to watch it you know how, how about you ash what are your final thoughts i mean yeah uh, what i just said kind of sums it up for me but you know even more than that um, you know, it's a blast. It's fun to make fun of, and that's always fun. I mean, we live watching The Room because it's a bad movie, and this is kind of that aesthetic, except yeah, it's not nearly as flaily. So, yeah, but but it's yeah. still fun. You're just not really paying as much attention while you're watching it. This is totally a mystery science theater, like riffable movie. <laughs> that, that's what I totally think. Right. You could totally riff on this. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of douchey characters and everything. I mean, it's you not know? that long of a movie. No, it's it, not, maybe not like an all. hour 15. Less not even that. that much. Yeah. How about you, Robert? What are your thoughts? You know what? I would recommend watching this again. Just like Fanboys. Ah, yeah. true. You yeah. know, just, you know, popping it in every once in a while, watching it with your buddies, you know. That never seems to hurt anybody, right? Oh, no, yeah. no, it doesn't. Not at all. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's quick movie. It's short, so it'd be an easy one to just sit here and play like we're doing right now. Yeah, and it's not so offensively bad like Masters of Disguise. <laughs> you know, it feels like you're sitting there for two hours when Dana, it's not even Carly 70 bad minutes. Jokes. Yep, yeah. there's our other criteria. Master of Disguise. Oh, <laughs> oh god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Though that is going to be a stain on our souls. Seriously. Yeah, I think you just need to shoot that movie. Yeah, seriously. But my final thoughts on this movie is it's just it's fun, it's stupid. There's lots of TNA, there's lots of gore. I mean, it, it it's nothing that you want to think too incredibly hard about. I mean, it's it's fun to analyze a little bit, but in the end, you just turn it on, drink a beer and watch it. Right. You know, it's one of those kind of movies. You know what was something we didn't mention? What's that? Why didn't we talk about how badass all the characters naturally are we did a little bit dude yeah but not enough these yeah. characters are badass for no reason it's like they're leveling up without you seeing it right exactly it's well, like, where's the level up it's stage? like as they're fighting they're getting stronger like seriously it's like change, they're it's dude. like they're leveling up with every fight yeah. they're using upgrade points to upgrade their weapons I know. Sure, there you go. <laughs> that's what you mean <laughs> you, you, you know it's funny I, on the uh, DVD menu screen they actually have this little thing at the top that shows their name their age and their skill and that's everything. right I saw that one of them one of them and their skill and their weapon and one of their skills is uh, comedic relief oh my goodness <laughs> and, sure. and like Kirk's is like arms acquisition oh my god it's like is that really a skill or I mean I mean is I think that he was just more just a straight up badass like he yeah. had done this before you know yeah. he was he had done this before my boy yeah. Captain Kirk just, well just done. salute. Salute, Captain Kirk. Salute. All right, we're going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, you can find Collateral Cinema on Chill Lover Radio. You can check us out on the Podbean, on the Podcoin app, I should say. You, we are also on Podbean, but on Podcoin, you can use the promo code Collateral to get 300 free Podcoins. Mm -hmm. We're also on Spotify, we're on iTunes, and we're on wherever else you get your podcast. Guys, y'all want to say anything else? Any collateral gaming stuff? 
Yeah, well, you know, Collateral Gaming, we're going to record something in a little bit here, but um, yeah, look for us too. We are on iTunes, uh, everywhere you find Collateral Cinema. And also Chill Lover and Podcoin as well. Chill Lover Radio, Podcoin, yeah. We are all on the Podcoin app. You can use the code Collateral Pod is our code in order to get 300 Podcoin. And yeah, we hope to be releasing more exclusive content for you guys uh, especially on our patreon both collateral cinema and collateral gaming yeah and uh, just more content overall so you know you can come over and you can go to collateral cinema for your movies and collateral gaming for your games and uh, very soon you're gonna find out what our next game is yeah yeah yeah, and and uh, Robert, you're going to be doing some YouTube stuff here pretty soon, right? Or are you going to have a short film ready soon? Yeah, the first short film that we were working on, it, sh- it should be out. It- it's yeah, close to nearly being finished, but yeah, I'm already got an idea for the second and third one. I'm that's gonna, awesome. I want to use that's you awesome. guys for and, all this. And, and also, we're going to develop some YouTube content that's exclusive for Collateral Cinema. Woo! Yep. At least awesome. get a pilot out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also we were talking about maybe a collateral wrestling thing, maybe. Getting into the wrestling. Oh, God. Oh, if we can get Michael Cornwell and Sam, be a lot easier. That would be cool. I'll, I'll definitely talk to them about that. we'll instantly know what we're talking yeah. about, you know. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember what the next movie is going to be. It's either going to be Slumber Party Massacre or Leprechaun Returns. I think I think it's some Slumber Party Massacre, honestly. And th- that's a fun movie. Nice. You guys are going to like that. I got all three of them, so. Yeah, and I, th- I think um, Matthew Ryan from the Country Club podcast is going to be on there. He's a huge slasher movie fan. Matthew Ryan's coming? Yeah, he, he knows a, th- a thing or two about these films. So, yeah, we will have him and probably Megan and Brian in the studio as well. That'll, that'll be fun. And, all right, if there's nothing else, if there's nothing further ado, I guess we're done here. I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Robert Ortegun. I'm Rocky Bukaki. I mean, Ashley Chancellor. <laughs> I'm Dakota <laughs> Chancellor. Bukaki. And Collateral Cinema is out. Oh. Oh. Collateral Cinema is an L Company production. All music and movie clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.